Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Anissa Riley, and welcome to another episode of the Ask Dr. Riley Show. So you just had an opportunity to see me speak with Miss Rusky, the fiance of James Ash, and now look who I have here, the both of them. Why are you looking at me like that? I like how you see me. I like that. I have both of them here together. <laughs> Can you just see mm, that, that part was dope. Okay. And we're going to have an opportunity to speak to the lovely couple together. So for all of you who didn't get a chance to see last week, go back, look at it so you can catch up and know exactly where we are in the mix of the show. So, Mr. Dean Dash. For those of you who don't know, that's the nickname that he gave me. Yes, he calls me Dr. Action. So if you're like, who is Dr. Action? <laughs> that's, that's me. That's Dr. Action. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> but for all of you out there in the TV land, my name is Dr. Anissa Riley, and um, welcome. Why do I call you Dr. Action? Why do you call me Dr. Action? This is supposed to be my show. Oh, well, the reason why I call you Dr. Action is because you're about that action. You know, when you first started talking about doing things in a different way, you were the first one that embraced it and fearlessly and that you did it and led by example to where everyone else had to be. There's no excuses after you did everything. You are Dr. Rash. And just to give a little background knowledge, it's there's some background knowledge. So, um, for those of you who don't know or don't follow Dave, which you should, he's always inspiring, he's always asking people to live their best life, live their dreams, and he presented that challenge, and I met the challenge, and I came back, and I was like, damn! Here it is. And so ever since then, it's been like, he's a movie, he's a movie. So, last week we were talking to Rocky about... Me? Yes. About you, and about love. Okay, guys, this is in the show, so we're going to have to all of that. We're going to have a whole talk okay? They don't, even, they don't even realize how much they're in love with each other, but when they get around each other, like the whole world disappears. So I'm just trying to talk, and I just hear all of this, you know... You're this, in yeah, they're, they're in their bubble already. Help me. Help me get through this. Okay. Alright, so... <laughs> this is a family show. It is? Well, depends on how old you can watch it. But my first question to everyone today is, what is your definition of love? Because this season is about love. What's your definition? I mean, love is about happiness. And, uh, yeah, I mean, actually, I just sum it up. It's just bliss. Love is, you know, caring about others and caring about yourself. Yeah. How would I say you love yourself so much that you have the ability to love her. You can't love yourself. You don't know how to love her. So, you know, love is something that people have different, different definitions of. For me, it's me and my family. So when you think of this beautiful woman right here, Miss Rocky, what is it about her that makes you happy, that makes you say, I love you, babe? So many lovers. So many lovers. Physically, she drives me nuts. Like, you know, I've always had a thing for Spanish girls. I ain't wrong me. It's the body and the curves and everything. Oh, and, you know, I had a high school sweetheart. And when I first met, I said, you remind me of my first high school sweetheart. So, like, I've been around a lot of women, like models, just that and the third. Well, they don't have this. You know, oh, so yeah. After I've been around women that have been paid a lot of money for their beauty, and then I'm like, this is real beauty. And I also made a decision um, when I first met her. Uh, if you don't do good when you wake up, you know, I don't care about how you look at night. I don't care how you look at makeup. Your tuxedo is that body. Your shoes are those feet. You know, so when I when you spend time with your, your, your woman, it's when she wakes up. It's when she is in her most natural place. So that's what I was looking for, the natural, you know. And aesthetically, that's what, you know, I didn't know she was Spanish. And, you know, because she worked for me, I didn't look, no doubt. But when I found out, I was like, oh, shit. it was crazy. And then I was like, oh, you spent. So, you know, so that works out. Yeah. But then, yeah. but then also, like, what was really attractive to her, she's really humble about all the things that she can do on a professional level. Like, she'd rather showcase other people than herself. She'd rather help others. Even before she helped herself back when I first met her, um, man, 
point. That's what we're doing. So, can I um, yes, sir. So, you know, when we start, first started to build um, our gallery, and it was a collective of a lot of people, she was really genuinely the only person that worked with me that even cared. You know, like when people disrespect me or sue me when they shouldn't, and we just helped them, she would feel just as violated as I did, where the other people would just go and still hang out with the people. You know, we had a big building, ED 172, and she's the only one that would make sure it was clean and she just took care of everything, you know. And um, I love the way she would, um, her relationship with my children. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of things. Like, you know, she's like, when you think about a girl, you know, I'm a guy that's come from some, a lot of unrecognized trauma. Yeah. But she's always been like my vacation, my escape from it. Like when she met me, she didn't know who I was. She heard about me because she came to work, but she really didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when I first got here, you know, I am pretty good. I knew that. Mm -hmm. So I also knew that she really genuinely liked us. Mm -hmm. There was no entitlement yeah. in our relationship, but she appreciated it. It wasn't like, damn, you gave me some goal or you're doing some goal, it should be platinum. Mm -hmm. She just was really appreciative of new opportunities and new things. And then what I really loved about her was that, number one, she has great taste. Like she said, with music, I have great taste in music. And when you have good taste in music and you, you know someone else and no one else does, there's a connection. You know, like just a connection with you, like it's like a person who has a connection with a person. You know, good taste is like, well, I found someone with good taste. And you may be around a lot of people that don't. So you always have that kind of laugh, you know. But what she brought me was culture. So when she would go out, like when she was working with me at first, she was like, after, like, I, I would think that nothing that, that 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 is going on in the world could possibly be cooler than what I'm doing. But as soon as, like, work after a certain time, they'd be like, you know, she's like, we, we, we are going. You know, because she was with a friend of Kim we worked with. And they'd be like, oh, we're going to this indie, and they'd be talking about this whole new world. So, you know, to me, even back then, I'm like, I'm too old to be out there like that. So videotape it, and she bring it back. So I saw it, and I was really interested in it. And I was like, you know what, throw me a part. You know, you don't want to be in this business because I really don't, but I am intrigued by the culture. Throw me a party. And they threw me a party. She threw me a party, spent her own money in, um, in, um, in Dumbo in Brooklyn. And it was the illest party in the street. There were miles, supermodels, porno stars, DJs, the cool kids perform, indie rock. It was just a real cool thing. And this was like back then, you know, when women first started, you know, coming around. So, at that point, um, also she, at some point she broke her knee. And when she broke her knee, she thought I was gonna send her like fire her, but I was like the first thing from my mind. You know what I mean? I just really like her in my life. You know, and I was also trans transitioning from Rockefeller to wanting to do something different. And also I really wanted to spend time. Like what people don't understand is the real reason why I walked away from the music business besides all the bullshit is it was taking too much time for me raising my children. And it wasn't an environment that I could bring my daughters. I really just really wanted to raise Tallulah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I ended up going to court and I was able to get her from 12 to 4 every day because Rachel was working. She was mm -hmm. you know, a designer. And she was with me during that kind of whole process. She was even the one that would deliver the messages like, yo, they just said you're going broke and there's foreclosure, <laughs> you know, in the paper. They want to comment. And what would I do? What would I say? Go to the parking with the kids. Yeah, they didn't care. They didn't care. It just was like it didn't bother me. I kind of laughed at it because I just told like, I That one might have devastated my whole week. Where it mm. just didn't mean, like, whatever. You know, it was part of the game. Like, take a moment to enjoy every part of your day. Damon has this motto like, no matter what's going on, make sure you laugh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not celebrating and laughing. Like, this is perfect. And that keeps you up. But she brought me culture. <clears throat> and then we opened up the gallery and it was just filled with the coolest shit. She was like the queen cool girl of the indie scene, you know? And she brought all of that to me and she broke her knee and she was listening to the Black Keys and on, on her birthday, they all went out. And you know, birthday is a big deal. They left me, I'm like, we're gonna go. And they're like, we're going to Black Keys concert. I'm like, what about me? You know, I can get in all oh, it's sold out. I'm like, and so I didn't go, but I said, call. And I like the music and then we're doing the Black Rock Project. Okay. She introduced me to MGMT when no one knew who they were. Like I remember her running up to the car 
And the thing about Raquel is in her face, you can see how elated she is. Like when she's happy, like when she talks about it, yeah. you can see it in her face. <laughs> so she walked up and I just saw that brightness in her face. And she was like, Damon, I want to tell you something about a band I really like. It was the first time she ever had like, that kind of conversation with me. And she played it and it was cool. You know, MG, MG went on to be really big. But it turned out, I, you know, I worked with Jim Jones at the time and they were on the same lady. And they were meant known to be really snotty, didn't talk to nobody, real mysterious. Two days later, we're at a concert. I got them doing high fives. I could jump on a, a, a remix. They never did remixes. And it was like my introduction into the indie world. But she did all of that. She recognized it. She had good taste. And because, you know, the, the energy was right, it just so happened they were on the same label with West Columbia, you know? And then, you know, going through what I really found that I was super duper attracted to and I really wanted to, she was curving me like a ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry. She's like to like curve and you know, and again, she's like, I'm too jealous and getting a uh, actor. And then I was just like, you know, it must be because she's black. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> she's Puerto Rican, you know what I mean? And you know, sometimes old school Puerto Rican. But, yeah, I mean, so, I mean. Yeah, so we worked it out, and she really was interested and made sure. She's like, yo, you got a wife or an ex wife, you got children. I'm not getting involved in this until yeah. so you make sure that you can do everything you can to be a dad to your kids. So she would actually drive me to Rachel's house to say, go work this shit out and make sure. But go, and you know what I mean? It was just, she was ready to not even be in that relationship with me because she's really my kids' friend. Mm -hmm. So I loved all of that shit. And, um, you know, and we like to have fun. We kick it. She's like my homegirl that, or my home. She's like a, like, a, it was like a slumber party that just never stopped. You know what I mean? So there it is. And then it's the food. Let's see, let's see those feet again. For those of you who missed last week, we talked about the feet. You have to figure out why the feet are there, but. Yeah, nice. yeah. So, yeah, and then, you know, again, us fighting to have a child, showing the strength and the resilience there was very impressive. It was like, you know, sometimes I would think, you know, sometimes you might panic, whatever, but, you know, she showed more strength than, like, people that are like gangsters and you know the resilience and the way she rolled certain things it was just no matter what because she's so strong i always have to be strong you know and cool about it but just the way she deals with things that she loves and how much she fights for it and i just knew that you know i've never been in a relationship where i had a child with one of my best friends with my best friend i was never able to raise my child i was never even i always had to visit my kids that's been my fight since she met me the reason why we were moving around was always because of my children because I had to be on deck. And she was always ready to come through. Like when my um, ex-wife was like, I'm moving to LA with my daughters, I just shut everything down and we just broke out. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't have my daughters in LA and I'm not up the block to protect them, I need to see them. Mm -hmm. You know, but she was right there with me right now. But, you know, being able to have a child with someone that you appreciate to fight for it, a child, to go through all of this, when, you know, I haven't been through this to have a child, but she finally, there was a happiness that I've never, I'm having a happiness that I've never ever felt in my life. This is, I tell her, especially when the baby, the first three days, the first three months, I'd be like, yo, I'm really having the best time in my life. Every day has been better than the next, and it keeps getting better because, you know, she even does shit. Like, she makes sure when I wake up that the first thing I see is baby does No matter what, I wake up and he's there and my day is good. And she's very good at architecting the vibe. You know, so having a schedule of cruise ship to do it all the time to make sure that we're all accommodated. Like she was the girl that at the party, she won best um most party girl. Like at the party. Like I said, she's the one to make sure the party is always good. Ah, okay. So okay. so the dinner's always good, okay. breakfast, every food is good, all our clothes are good, all our sheets are good. She takes very particular attention to the details. You know, like I might want it, but she'll make it happen. Let's see we're gonna do this. You have to tell me that mm -hmm. I'll get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens with that bed? Best sheets on the bed. <laughs> like she knows how to spend the money. She knows how to really digest and marinate life. Like, and then she got game dance, like she pulled away. Mm -hmm. She definitely did. But I, I never thought that I could be in this kind of relationship. Like it's been it's been it's been a decade. And I was definitely known for not being that guy. Yeah. And now I'm known for being that guy, which is crazy. But what I do want is for people to see what a healthy relationship looks like. Yeah. What it looks like to be successful and enjoy your love, your woman, your family, being healthy. That should be the cool. She's the one that made it cool for me. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I know how it's impacted me 
And when I get the plug, I like to pass it. I'm not passing her around. But I will, <laughs> Let's be clear. But I will give you the handle. You know what I mean? Of like when you recognize and, and something else, something else that was very impressive about her is how she embraced my love for me. She's never ever been like, don't talk about it. She's like, talk about it. She's actually looked at, to her for help. Like there's been certain situations where Aaliyah, like somebody might say something that might not be complimentary and Rocky would protect her. Like, nah, we don't f- homeboy because of whatever, like somebody yeah. might have. One day we were like with this girl, she's like, get the new homeboy record. I mean, she's like, yeah. And she was like, you know, fuck with And like, like the strike mm-hmm. right there. And then another day, sorry. Wow. And then another day we were in, um, in um, upstate New York. And all of a sudden, these white butterflies just start flying all over Rocky. Like, no, I got pictures of it. I mean, I can show it to you. Mm-hmm. And then later on, we were talking. So, you know, um, the angel was birth, and they actually referenced both of those situations. Aaliyah, and, and like Aaliyah picture, her, she's the one. And what people don't really understand is uh, a lot of, like, uh, the similarities that I loved about Aaliyah, she has a lot of them because Aaliyah wasn't what people expected. You know, it was a, a very, a sense of, um, confidence but without making people feel intimidated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i mean and rocky does that like well, everyone really never feel like rocky's never that girl that she thinks she all that never that mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's always a humbleness with all the beautiful things that she does and that's what Aaliyah. Had. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then sometimes like one time we were in a farm with a barn when we were in north carolina and i had never watched um Aaliyah's last movie it was too painful for me you know what i mean i never watched it it came off and Rocky was like, now you gotta watch. And for some reason, she just knocked out. She just left me alone with me. That was crazy. Right? It was, I was like, she's just like, I don't know how, I just knocked out. And I watched the movie, and it, you know, it was crazy, but I, 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 it was like, I didn't have the strength to watch it without, because I had to be in love to watch someone that I love. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it's easier for us to talk about losing a child or, you know, a pregnancy if now that we have one. Yeah. yeah. You know, so also what I was able to do because of the movie was the first time I was in love was recognized what it really feels like. So I had, I was like, oh, shit, that was that feeling. I know yeah. what I did, did. Yeah. and I got it. Now I'm like, you know, we're doing everything together. We can't go no, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Was, you see, I'll be like, nah, we broke. <laughs> and I want, I want to spend every second with her. So I've architected my life, and we've architected our life where we work together every day. We work out together every day. We swim together every day. We eat together every day. <laughs> When she takes, I take a shit, she takes a shit right there. We, oh you know God, what I mean? We're yes, together yeah. every, not on the same boat, but we have to <laughs> every day. We can every you look ready to do it. Every day. You, know you can mean? feel it just sitting here right now. Like you can feel the, the energy, you can feel the love. Like you can tell that you guys really, really enjoy one another. And um, when you talk about it, it's something I said to you last week on the show was that. Um, your face lit up and you talked about him. And now he's talking about you and your face is lighting up again. Like, lighting my face up. Oh, that's okay. right. And you know, and, and, and really, I'm gonna tell God how to really. Yeah, I think that's key. Not just hey, you guys, you know, you okay, I'm gonna tell mm-hmm. so much more time. You guys wrap up like five? I'm gonna have how long we've been talking. I don't know how long we've been 18 minutes. How long you show you? Okay. Um, thank you. So we have to and focus on when, when you when you're talking. Okay. Yeah, because the better battery. Yeah, this is your close up, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So what's the last thing you're talking about? Uh, how you shoot light up her face? So, you're talking about men. Oh, so so what she? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how to do. It. Oh, yeah, the man. That's right. So guys, listen up. The man who's going to tell you how to do it. What she told you was well, she met me and saw me in my most devilish state. Like when I'm running around, the pressure off girls, and making them walk in the walls. She knows. You said walk in the walls? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I have stats for that. Like I know that I'm not going to make this girl walk in the wall, say something back to the That happens all the time. And because she's done, bump heads the whole night. But she loves, yes. So she loves because she knows how that pressure feels to watch other people and how they deal with it. So we might, so she loves that part of you. And she also appreciates the fact that I love women, you know what I mean, and to keep women around me. And we, we've always been real honest about that. And so I never had to put a code on my phone. You see, yeah. she looks at my, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You know, and, and like, you know, in the perfect world, 
And I'm not saying it happened, but it's like, yo, somebody, I'm not doing nothing without her. So if a girl likes me, she got to put an application with home. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, she, <laughs> she's, she's really, very selective. You know what I mean? But at least I'd be like, yo, like literally real top choice girls that people know yeah. have come at me. Like in the city, I'd be like, all right, come with me. And they have to sit and talk to Rocky and they some be mad, but some respect them. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, I ain't gonna violate my best friend. Yeah. You know what that's I mean? Key. That's, that's the one key. thing you don't lie to your best friend. Yeah. And if you do, that's not your best friend. Yeah. The only you know, you're not the police. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, if you know who I am and I tell you who I am, then I don't want to be guarded for you. Mm-hmm. But I'm never gonna disrespect you and lie to you. But she's always been like, if there's a certain tolerance of honesty, I'm not gonna be having out of you. There's always even your honesty better be respectful. Or else I'm not gonna give you all that love. You know, mm-hmm. we we lived in a um I'll tell you something real quick. That's what I love for the, for the cars. Man. So we moved from Carmel. We all lived in like a compound in upstate New York. And it was an hour and a half from New York, from Manhattan. But, you know, we loved it so much, we kept going back and forth. But then it got crazy. And this is before we were together. So, I was getting out of heaven. So she was like, uh, she was like, like well, basically, kind of. <laughs> so she was like, all right, well, I want to get a crib and you get your crib. So we'll get you your crib first. So she got a studio in the dope ass spot, and I moved in. I never got my crib. You know what I'm saying? I was like, set up. <laughs> like, but, but it was the best. It was a year that I lived in the studio apartment with a dog, and it was at the time of my life. Mm. Because when she made me, what I was able to do was just be normal. Mm. We could go to the store, we go grocery shopping. Like that, I, I, you know, I'm not not to be like front or nothing, but like I've been pretty successful yeah. since I've been yeah, a teenager. Mm-hmm. Since a teenager. Yeah. So she got like in Carmel, take me to beer. Oh, tasting. Beer yeah. tasting, yeah. picking, oh, yeah. you know, a farmer's market. Yeah. For a guy like me, that's my escape. I, don't, I want all of that. I want a girl that takes pictures and paints and does all that work style, like yoga games, stupid form, everything. So, you know, that's really all the things mm-hmm. for me. It's like finding that escape, being honest, showing your true self, never lying, and trying to find a common ground. Yeah, <laughs> for about a, a year, we knew we loved each other, but we knew we triggered each other. And we had to deal with those things. And it took a minute, like you said, it was like, yo, no, you don't be talking. You know, when, when someone doesn't speak, the only time they speak is when they get emotional. So you have to trigger them. And I'm like, I'm not going through all that to get you to talk all the time. too traumatizing for both of them. Yeah. So we had to figure that out. You had to figure the girl stuff out. And she was like, you better figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But then what happened was she just wore me to f down. You know, with the good food, the love, had a baby. Now she's in complete control. Wherever, wherever I go, on the knee, in front of everybody, I visit all the, everybody saw it. There's, there's a ring. When I'm not in the house, she can see me. And there's always one. I'm guarded. Nicolette guards me because she's always going to pick her first. You know what I'm saying? She Love goes. Nicolette. That's, so that's the comfort zone she's in, and I'm with her all the time. So I don't know that if I was a guy that didn't tell her the truth, if I was a guy that was cheating on her, if I was a guy that wasn't having, you know, that wasn't around, she might not be this person. She might be triggered all the time. I know one thing girls don't like. Yeah. They hate to be lied to and yeah. they can't catch you. Yeah. They go, I can't catch you. I know what you did. Yeah. You tried to crazy. You tried to nuts and you feel it. I know how I used to be that guy that yeah. used to trigger the people that were with me. Feel it. So I don't ever want to put that situation yeah. where there's I got a hit on me and I don't know when it's gonna happen. Yeah, I, mean? I love you. Be in love. Yeah. You care yeah. about how she feels. Yeah. Yeah. Even someone's person that's always he understands he understands emotions better than anybody I've ever experienced. And so he can analyze his emotions and your emotions at the same time before i can even understand my own he knows he's like i just think he's just lived a lot of different lives and david does enjoy like experience in life like okay i want to do this i want to learn how to do these things so he can like any type of person he meets he can relate to them in some sort of way whether it's you know being on the streets to Making a car, like being has like this whole array of knowledge, of knowledge that is just it's for any person. You want to, yeah, it's happening. You wouldn't expect it, and, and he's like, I just don't know if you can get a friend. 
And I'm hot. <laughs> so so yeah. 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 I ask her some questions. I ask her some questions. Let's see. Come to let's see. Let's see. I believe the moon lasts. Yeah, yeah, I believe. So here we go. What is your favorite food? Let's see if you got this right. Uh, uh, well, it's always like a cheeseburger or chicken fingers, but the vegan version. You know what I mean? And ding, ding, ding. Um, I used to eat a little oxtails, but it's a wrap. There's no vegan oxtails? No. They're going to taste like oxtails. Yeah. yeah. All right. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.